This is part 8 of the Craftsman King Silly 100 Drill Press Conversion Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen part 7, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we'll begin assembly of the drill press. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. First thing we're going to be doing is polishing the inside bores of the chuck body. And I'm just using a cotton buffing wheel on a Dremel or a Fordham. And we're just going to clean these out. And then we're going to assemble the chuck. So I have an entire video on how to go about disassembling and assembling, installing and uninstalling Jacob's Chucks. I'll put a link to it here. It's called the Jacob's Chuck Omnibus. But basically, we're just going to put a little bit of this grease in here. This is Mystic JT6. It's a, an LGI number two grease. And then we'll insert the jaws into the body. And each one of the bores on the chuck is numbered and the jaws go in a specific order. You can watch the Omnibus video to figure all that out. And once we've got the jaws in there, then we can install the split nut or nut unit as Jacobs calls it. There's only one way for it to go on. And once we've got it installed, we'll test the chuck by running the jaws all the way out and they should meet and be flush like that so then we'll put some grease inside the sleeve and just sit that on the chuck to hold the nut unit in place maybe add a little bit more grease to the back side of where each one of the jaws go then we'll set it on there then we're going to take this over to the vise so you want to retract the jaws so that they protrude about a half an inch outside of the chuck and then I'm just using a an old sleeve from another chuck to compress this sleeve onto the body. And you can see that lip on the back end of the chuck body before you get to the safety collar and that is a seated sleeve. So now we should be able to rotate the sleeve and the chuck should operate like it's supposed to operate. And if all that is good to go, we're done assembling the Jacobs chuck. But again, check out that chuck omnibus video. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the Jacobs chuck. Here we are with the base. And I've got a bottle brush on my uh, drill and we're just cleaning out the bores with that bottle brush. And after we've cleaned all three of those bores, then we're going to go ahead and lube up those bores. And this is Super Lube. It's a synthetic grease. And it's what I use with every drill press I assemble. Then we go ahead and start that... Uh, the column lock 
screw into the base and then we're going to mount the model number panel on the base. So I'm using drive screws to mount it. You can get the drive screws from McMaster Car. They come in a variety of sizes. And we'll just use a brass punch to seat it all. And then we'll use the bottle brush and we're going to clean out the bores on each part as we work with that part. So here we're just cleaning out the bores on the table support and then we'll lube all of those bores with the super lube. And then we'll set that aside. Here we have the table. And again, we're just cleaning out the bores. And then lubing the bores. And then the head casting, and there are a lot of bores. But this gives you an opportunity to see if you've forgotten to remove any of the masking tape. And next we're going to install the headband, engine turned head panel. And again, we're using drive screws to install this. We'll just get one started. And then get the other one started. And then you can see there's some, some play in that headband, so we want to tighten it up before we set those panel screws. Or drive screws. And just make sure that panel is nice and snug. I have no idea what happened with the camera there, but. No big deal. And then we've got the Craftsman logo panel we need to install with drive screws. Just get one started, then get the other one going. And then we'll seat them with the brass punch. There we go. Next, we just need to lube up all of the bores in the head casting. So again, we're just using the super lube. Then we're going to install the outer snap ring. There's a 
recessed area in the bottom bore of the spindle pulley bores that it sits in. I'll zoom in here in a minute. And this is what the bottom pulley of the spindle pulley assembly rests on. I have a whole video about how all that stuff works on the inside. I'll put a link to it here. But if you don't have this installed, then the spindle pulley assembly will sit too low in the drill press. Sorry for the head getting in the way here. But there you can see the outer snap ring in its recessed area. So next we're going to assemble the spindle pulley assembly and these are Timken bearings. They are 6205 ball bearings. And you need two of them. And we'll see if we can seat both of those by hand. And there's the first one. Then you've got the sleeve. Then you've got the second one. And then you've got the inner snap ring. And one side of that is kind of rounded on the inside of it, and one side of it's kind of sharp. And you want that sharp side facing towards the camera. And then it's got a recess that it sits in. Make sure it's in there and that everything is nice and tight and that the bearings spin. We're good to go. So the last thing we're going to do with this assembly is add a little bit of that super lube to the inside of those splines. That's where the, the uh, spindle engages with the spindle pulley assembly. We can set that aside. Next, we're going to be assembling the hub pinion spring assembly. So there are the pin that's going to go in here is splined on one end. And I made sure that the spline sides are facing towards us in the camera. And then we've got the spring. We're just going to coat that with some super slick stuff. Then we can insert that spring into the pinion and then line up the loop on it with the opening in the hub and the pinion and then drop that pin in there you can see those splines they should be facing towards the top and then tap it in and use a punch to seat it good to go. So next we're going to assemble the quill spindle assembly and we have two ball bearings for this and they are 6202 5 8 bore. Make sure that you get the 5 8 bore on those and we'll get one started. And then see if we can get that down. If not, we can just use the shim and then a piece of PVC pipe to get it to ride down the spindle. And we can get that shim off of there. And then we can seat the spindle with that bearing inside the quill. So you'll notice the rack on the quill, there is a space above and below the rack. And you want the larger space towards the bottom where the taper is. And then we can install the second bearing in the top. And 
again, we'll put that shim on there and then tap it in place so that it seats inside the quill. And then we're going to leave that shim on there because it's supposed to be there. Maybe just tap it a couple more times to make sure it's really seated. And then we've got the rubber washer. And you have to have all these pieces present, otherwise this is not going to work. Then we have the spindle collar. One side of it is flat and the other side is kind of convexed. So you want the convex side facing away from the quill. And then I'm just going to use my thumb to press all that together and then tighten it down with that cone point set screw. There's a recess in the spindle that that cone point set screw is supposed to sit in. All right, next thing is the feed stop bracket and that'll just slide onto the quill. Then we can put the screw, lock washer and nut through that so that we don't lose it. We're not going to tighten it in place though. We'll leave all that loose. And then we need to go over to a vise. We're going to clean off the taper on the spindle with some acetone and clean out the socket on the inside of the chuck with the acetone. And then we're going to use a large Allen wrench. This is a nine millimeter Allen wrench and we're going to insert that into the jaws on the chuck. Again, I cover all of this on the uh, chuck omnibus video on installing and removing the chuck, but no big deal. So we're just lining up the flats on that Allen wrench with the flats on the jaws. And then we'll lock that Allen wrench inside a vise. And then we can insert the taper into the socket on the chuck and then tighten down the safety lock collar. I use a spanner wrench to do this and that spanner wrench, everything you need to know about where to order one and get one if you want one is in that Chuck Omnibus video as well. And once we've got it tightened down good, and then we can remove the Allen wrench from the Chuck. And I apologize if you can hear my dog chewing on a bone in the background. So next we just need to assemble the motor mount and for this we just insert those two motor mount pins and then drive them in. They're a press fit. So once they're in there you should be good to go. And then we can mount the motor to the motor mount. So you'll notice where the pins are, they're not dead center of this motor mount. They're towards one end more than the other. And we want to install them towards the top of the motor 
as we have the motor mounted. So the side that's facing me is the side that's going to have the pulley mounted on the motor. And we've got four screws. We're going to put a washer on the screw, insert it through the motor and into the motor mount, and then put another washer and then a nut. And we'll do that for all four of them. And then we'll tighten them down. And we're going to have to come back and adjust this a little bit once we go to mount the motor. But for now, we just want to make sure it's all assembled. And that is going to wrap up this video. The next video will be the final assembly of the drill press. So we've got everything prepped. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you got questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. I appreciate all the support. And as always, I will see you next time.